Hey everyone, it's Sarah the Redneck Bifocal Stitcher. Welcome to my Floss Tube, a channel all about cross stitch. Um, today's May 1st. I'm running out of daylight, so I want to hurry and get this done. Um, I've just run into a few hiccups, <laughs> but I want to get this done today. So um, tomorrow is the second, obviously, and I go back to work um, after uh, six weeks and whew, I'm excited and nervous all at the same time. So I want to get this done today. Anyway, welcome. Um, I've been off for a couple of months and a lot of you know why. I will talk about it briefly at the end of this video. So there it is. Um, if you left a comment on my last floss tube for Hannah, thank you so much for your kind words. It meant so much to her to see all of the positive feedback that she got from the stitching community. So thank you. And then um, I'm, I'm a little behind in all of my floss tubes. So if you are here from another channel, welcome. I'm truly grateful to have you here with me. I saw a, 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 an uptick in subscribers after Sarah of Sarah's Stitchy Spot gave me a mention. And I have to say, I hope that I can be a fraction as entertaining as she is. Um, if you uh, have seen her social media just within the past couple of days. She just finished Mary 395 from um, Hands Across the Sea and it is, it's a knockout. It is just amazing. Um, so huge congratulations to her and welcome to all of you who have come at her uh, suggestion. So there it is. Um, I finished quite a few things. I've got some pieces that have um, been finished at my framer and I just need to run and pick them up. So um, by the next time I film, I will have some new framed pieces to show you. So there it is. Um, but let's get to it. Um, what have I worked on in the past couple months? Um, first up is Stitchy Witchy Bell Pull from Stitchy Pros. And I have moved into that top section with the phases of the moon. This is such a fantastic piece and I'm enjoying it so much. Um, this beautiful fabric is spicy mustard from Fiber on a Whim. It's a 40 count and I, I am really enjoying working on both 40 and 36. Um, I've got uh, I think I am going to do Summer Quaker on 46, so we'll see. Um, I haven't done anything that small just yet. But um, next up, I worked on a little bit of Goody Grimwood from Plum Street Samplers. I uh, just wanted to get a little bit more done on this house. So I filled in um, just the section along that bottom row of windows. So there's just a little bit more done on this. Not a whole lot. I also picked up um, Jack Frost's Tree Farm from Little House Needleworks. And I'm sorry if it feels like I'm rushing. I just, I don't know. Um, anyway, I filled in a lot of the white and I don't know if I did much else, but I wanted to get just a little bit more done on that. Um, I'm kind of treating all of these as color completion blocks. So once I'm done with one color, I'll move on to the next, which I think is why I got most of the white done in here. But um, this is going to be just fabulous when I'm done with it. Um, I also worked on um, a piece that I'm stitching for my husband. It is a witchy stitcher design and it's called That Snow Moon. And I thought this would be a cute little addition to his little Star Wars section that he has. He has built several of the Lego Star Wars pieces and I thought this would just be fun for him to have um, with everything else. So um, it'll be the Death Star under construction. This side is complete. And then um, below it'll say, that's no moon. So there's that from Witchy Stitcher. Um, I also picked up for a little bit um, Folk Flowers from Satsuma Street. This is a bell pull and it is huge and beautiful and I just am loving all of these colors so much. Um, I managed to work in this little section here at the bottom while I have been out. So a little more progress on this. And um, I'm, I'm loving these. I love how they look pink. 
they're really more um, coral orangey colors, but on this fabric, they look pink and I love it so much. So there's Folk Flowers from Satsuma Street. Um, I picked up Brave Hearts from, oh my gosh, my mind just went blank, Little House Needleworks. So here is that design and I got a little bit of the bottom done with the um, hill with the flowers. Got a little bit done on that. Um, I also picked up um, Float from Plum Street Samplers. This is the one that she did in conjunction with Heartstring Samplery and I'm stitching both of them on a 40 count piece of, um, what is this, Vintage Country Mocha. Um, this is just about as, as wide as it's going to be. There's some leaves right here that I need to stitch, but it's really not that big. Um, this will look just beautiful once it's all together and everything will be on the same piece of fabric. So I'm excited for that. Um, but I got all of the house done. I'm so excited for how much progress I've made on this. Live on Little. Um, most of you know I was super excited to start this one and it's looking so, so good. Um, I got the house done and I moved over into the grassy area. So here's where I am right now. Oh, isn't it so fabulous? I love this. The house is done. How many times have I said that? <laughs> anyway, uh, there's a little chapel that's going to go right around here. And then this is all water and there's a big boat and I'm just loving this stitch so much. Um, I set a goal to have 2000 stitches put into this, um, during this month. And, um, with me going back to work, it'll be interesting to see how that changes up my stitching. Plus, um, school gets out later this month. And so, um, I won't have a whole lot of stitching time. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I also worked quite a bit on the four elements from Satsuma Street. I love this one. I saw this in person at Stitch West last year. And um, while it had been on my radar, seeing it in person just put it right at the top of the list. So here we are on um, my progress on that. Oops. There it is. I love this so much. Those colors are so vibrant. I am doing DMC. I just didn't want to spend... Um, the money on a whole new set of floss. Um, she did it in Cosmo and then provided the conversion for DMC. So I am doing DMC, but nonetheless, this is just such a beautiful piece. So there is four elements. Um, and then I did go to Stitch West um, just in April with my friend Jessica from um, Kansas City. She flew over and stayed with me for a few days and we had an absolute blast and it was so great to see everyone at Stitch West. Um, friends, old and new. I had fabulous table mates. Um, I had just gotten my staples out earlier that week and so I was so relieved to not have to worry about working around having the staples in place and trying to, you know, circulate at Stitch West and visit with all of my friends. So anyway, um, I started working on the kit that Primrose Cottage Design gave to all of us, which is um, Honey Bees and Stitching Please. So I have a nice little start on that. And I'm excited to give um, this a whirl, finishing it um, with the supplies that they provided. Um, and I will say hands down, if any of you have the opportunity to go to a retreat where Primrose is going to be the featured designer, um, go. Um, absolute top-notch group of ladies and I will, I will forever be a fan. Um, Lindsay and her mom and the rest of her crew, they're all just absolutely wonderful, wonderful human beings. So, um, yeah, that was, that was a great experience. Um, yeah, what else can I say? 
So um, I also worked a little bit on Princess Eliana. Um, not a whole lot, but I did put in maybe a few hundred stitches. And here's where I am on her. I, I know Hannah Wollstenholm put in a lot of work and she finished Eliana. Oh, just beautiful. So here she is. Um, I just worked on this front section of her dress right here and she is just fabulous. I love this one so much. So Mirabilia, love Nora. Um, I also put in a couple hundred stitches on Memento Mori from Satsuma Street and I just worked on this upper section along here but Again, her color palette and her colorways are just so great. How can this, you know, not just put you in such a good mood? Vibrant colors. And of course, Hannah was excited to see me pull this out and work on it and reminded me that it will be hers when I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, while Jessica was here for Stitch West, um, we did start a piece together and we decided to do Babushka's Bees from Plum Street Samplers. And I was excited to have what I feel is a perfect piece of fabric for this. This is um, Macchiato from Be Stitch Me and it's a 36 count and oh, I love it so much. Such a beautiful piece of fabric. Um, but yeah, that is just wonderful. And I love how this is turning out on this fabric. The fence does blend in a little bit, but I think once I get everything done, um, it'll be way more visible. I might add in a little bit sh of shadowing um, through some, ooh, excuse me, through some back stitching a little bit. Um, but yeah, I just think this is such a beautiful piece. So there's that. And then last but not least, I did mention this on my last video. Um, I expressed wanting to finish that one over one quote on a new constellation so that I could allow myself to continue working on it. <laughs> so silly. But um, I did, I finished it. I finished that upper one over one, it's done. And so now I, am, I have given myself permission to work on the floral um, border that goes down each side and Oh, I love this piece so, so much. I do need to add in the Liberty Bell in that middle panel on the bottom, but I'm just thrilled, thrilled with how this has turned out. So a new constellation. Um, and then while I have been out, I did get several finishes of, as I have mentioned. Um, first off, I want to show you Pretty Little Amsterdam. This is all done. And again, these colors, they're just so bright, cheerful. Um, this is a piece that I made for my mom. She will be going to Amsterdam and Vienna and Budapest um, later this summer. So I've made this um, just for her so that she can remember her trip. I also managed to finish um, Halloween Tiny Town. This is on a cute little piece of um, vintage country mocha and I used the shepherd's bush conversion for it and I love all of these colors um, just a few changes not a whole lot but it's just such a great piece and again I would stitch one for every day of the year if Cecilia should ever decide she wants to do that um, I also finished um, the the raven from the witchy stitcher I believe that's what it's called. Um, Poe the Raven, I wanna say. Uh, this is a 36 count piece of, gosh, Legacy maybe from Picture This Plus. I had intended on stitching it one over two um, because it's 36 count, but um, by the time I had realized that I had started at two over two, I had already worked my way into the fence line and thought, oh, I'm just gonna keep going. So the coverage is exceptional on this and I just used DMC 310. So there's that. And then last but not least, I finished um, Salem Sisters Apothecary from Primrose Cottage Designs. 
This is on a 32 count piece of spiced honey from Color and Cotton. And this is um, also stitched two over two with um, DMC 310. And I love how this one turned out. I did wind up frogging this whole section right here because I was off um, by one stitch. And while most wouldn't notice, I could. And so I just needed to fix it for my own peace of mind. But there it is. Um, I also finished uh, Dilio Shade, which is the alligator from Mama Witch Cross Stitch. And um, that's at the framer. I need to pick it up. And then I also dropped off the little red, um, I stitched it on a red piece of fabric. Uh, the Night Spirit Studio, he used my scissors to cut paper. And then um, I want to talk really quickly about Strength and Dignity, which I'm going to put right here. Um, I stitched it, I started it, and I finished it, and I sent it off to my framer um, in the time frame that I'm going to talk about briefly. Um, I went to pick up my market order that I had placed before all of this whole incident happened about and I um, was at Stitchery Express and I asked Cindy if she had a section with all of the other market um, things that she brought back and I saw Strength and Dignity and I knew immediately that it was going to be the piece that I wanted to stitch to um, help me focus on this time in my life so um yeah, I, I kitted it up and I got it stitched up in just a matter of days. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had it done before I went into the hospital and I did. So um, I'm excited to show you how it turned out. Um, so I'll share that with you on my next video. Uh, that's all I have right now for stitching. So I'm going to take a break and be right back and talk um, for just a few minutes about what has transpired over the past couple of months. Well, it is May 2nd and I knew that it was gonna take me a little bit longer to film this floss tube. Don't ask me how, but I just did. Uh, on my Instagram story yesterday, I said, feeling cute might take eight hours to film a half hour long floss tube and here we are. Um, I'm just going to talk briefly about what has happened over the past couple of months. And I, I'm not talking stitching, but what I'm talking about is important, I think, to everyone. So please stick around because what I am going to talk about might be the difference between you making the decision to go get um, preliminary cancer screenings sooner than later. Um, I have a history of colorectal cancer in my family. My father passed away five years ago from it. And I knew that it was important for me to get a colonoscopy. And so for my birth month of March, I decided what better way to celebrate than with a colonoscopy. So I went and had it done and I was most nervous for the results. Everything else, piece of cake. Um, but yeah, the results were my biggest fear. And when I woke up, I asked how many polyps were found and the doctor said one. So combined with my history, that puts me at high risk and I'll be having colonoscopies every year now, which is fine. Um, he sent me off to recovery and when I was with my husband and we were getting ready to head out, he came back in and said, hey, I need to talk to you about something that I saw and um, get this addressed. So um, he said that he saw something after he had finished the exam that was on the camera, but not in an area that he normally looks, but it was of concern to him. So he went up took a look, took some biopsies, and said he, believe, he believed it was a neuroendocrine tumor. Um, and of course, the blood drained from my face and everything that I had been worried about was coming to fruition, that my results were telling me that I had cancer. And the doctor said, well, if you're gonna have cancer, this is the cancer you want. To which I thought, that is the last thing I wanna hear. Um, 
but you know, there it is. Um, he asked me who I wanted as my surgeon and I didn't even have to think twice about who I chose because I knew that the surgeon I chose was the right one for me. Um, I had circulated in his room and I will continue to circulate in his room um, while he works at my hospital. So anyway, um, the doctor who did my colonoscopy had his his office people set up everything for me. So my appointment with oncology and lab work and my PET CT scan, everything was arranged for me. I did want to throw my phone out the window because it would not stop ringing and I was getting text messages with results and reminders and everything. And yeah, it, it was driving me nuts. Anyway, um, I was trying to function as normally as possible, uh, which was difficult as to be expected. And in that time, um, I, you know, there was a, a big shift in priorities for me in my life and, um, just the things that you would expect to have happen when you've been diagnosed with cancer. So yeah, I don't know what else to say about that, but, um, I had surgery on my birthday to remove the tumor, to remove Leonard. Um, 10 inches of my small intestine, large intestine, and the valve that connected the two were removed. And I had about 20 staples in my abdomen. I was in the hospital for five days recovering. And um, during that time, my husband got a phone call that his father had taken a turn for the worse with his health. And he had actually been in the Provo area visiting my brother-in-law, my husband's brother. Um, and while I was in the hospital, Rod was going between me and his dad an hour and a half away and working and helping Hannah with whatever responsibilities and things she needed to have happen while I was in the hospital. I, Rod was definitely burning the candle at both ends. And then the day that I was discharged, um, he got the phone call that his father had passed away. So it was a rough ending to the month. Um, I'm fortunate to have had my sister-in-law there. Um, she was staying with us um, for something related to work. Uh, she was in town from Kansas City, but um, it just worked out that it was the same time that she needed to be here for her family. So I thought that was um, a good coincidence at an unfortunate time, but, um, I was able to go to Stitch West. I was worried about that. Um, and my stitches or not my stitches, but my staples, I had them removed just a few days before. So I was appreciative that I was able to go. Um, and I had a friend also from the Kansas city area staying with us, um, so that we could go to Stitch West together. And that was an absolute delight to have Jessica with me. Um, and it really helped with my recovery, um, as well as seeing all of my internet stitchy friends in person and being able to give them hugs and, and talk to them. So, um, I did get a phone call from my PA saying that there was metastatic carcinoma found in three of the five lymph nodes that were removed at the same time as my surgery. And I was worried about that. So I called my oncologist's nurse manager and spoke to her about it. Um, she said that it was expected to be found. And from my knowledge of pathophysiology, I can make sense of that. Uh, do I like the word metastatic? No. Do I like the word carcinoma? Also no. Um, but I feel okay about this. Um, gosh, what else do I say? I, yeah, it's a lot, um, to have dealt with in the past six weeks. And I feel very fortunate to have 
the support of the friends and family that I have near and the stitching community around the world. Thank you all for your prayers and well wishes and love and support that you have um, offered up for me. So there it is. Um, please do not be afraid to get these things done. You never know how it will impact your life um, for the better. Um, so yeah, and I will tell you this too, um, because my body apparently doesn't like me very well, um, I also have to get mammograms every six months to keep an eye on a, a spot that they don't like <laughs> at the doctor's office. Um, if you get a PET CT for a different kind of cancer, that does not cancel out the need for a mammogram, so... <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping that I could bypass having that done because they would have seen anything on on the scan, but apparently not. Anyway, um, I rambled on for long enough, so I will tell you this much. As your OR nurse and your friend, get your screenings, um, your mammogram, cervical cancer, skin cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, any kind of preventative maintenance and preliminary screenings, get them done for your own sake and for your family's sake and your friends. So with that, have a great day stitching and I will talk to you later.